Keith, can you explain virtual production workflow? Virtual production is a little bit different than the normal filmmaking process, and it starts with what we call previs. Um, a client will come to us and say, hey, I want to do this project in virtual production. Um, so everything in virtual production is done in that pre-production process. There's a lot of planning. So I, the, one of the questions we ask them is, well, what are you trying to achieve and what are some different ways we can achieve it? Because not every, not every virtual production shoot requires what we call a 3D asset, which is using Unreal Engine. And there's also called 2D assets, which we use as well, which is a video or image plates which basically for people who don't know what that is, is basically a video file or image file which is displayed on the LED wall. So, um, and that can kind of parallel with in-camera VFX, which I can get, to, get into later. But um, anyways, so if a person comes to us, they're like, hey, we want to do this. We start talking about, okay, what are we going to use? 2D asset, 3D asset? Do we need camera tracking with the 3D asset under our engine? And depending on what they need, we'll make that determination. Um, so we start planning it out, help them out with, you know, decorating the foreground with whatever practicals they need to sell that environment. Like if they're in the snow mountains, um, where to get a proper set dresser person to come in and we help facilitate that. Um, so we talk about all these different things and like talk about the certain camera they're using and the technical elements that, you know, what's involved in virtual production. Now we're just in camera what you can see but also with um, the blocking and placements of the actor compared to the wall, depending on what shots they want. So a lot of that stuff's discussed in the previs, in pre-production. And we shoot in virtual production since everything's with an LED wall as a backdrop versus a green screen, it's all shot in what we call picture. So when you're in post-production, you don't have to worry about compositing and you know, taking that green screen out and putting whatever background you want in there. It's all shot in the can. So that's one of the big benefits. Um, so, so yeah, so, so everything's shot there, it saves them a lot of time. So we talk about all these elements and you know, when it's time for the shoot, they come in, we tech advise and help them out with all those different things I just discussed. And um, we decorate it with the right foreground dressing depending on the scene, right? And then we light it properly for the shots they want and the proper lens, um, focal length, you know, if they want like, a tighter shot on a 50 or 65 millimeter or if they're trying to get a wide shot which can be achieved well in virtual production just, there's more precise blocking what has to be done we help them out with that so that's a lot of technical stuff that we help out with so we get them what they want and then if they're using the Unreal Engine we'll if they want camera tracking to create that parallax we help them out with that as well so um, if they're just using a 2D uh, asset such as a video image plate um, then it doesn't have camera tracking on it. So uh, it just depends what they need. So that's kind of the whole, the whole process works with virtual production. And then they then have that footage they can take to go into post-production and it's all shot in picture. So they don't have to do any compositing, um, but all that previous work is done up front for pre-production where all those things I just discussed have to be precisely talked about. So it's lit properly, they have the right, you know, focal length, the millimeter, the 50 or 65 millimeter, wherever it's a tire shot, or if it's a wider shot, wherever they're trying to achieve. So, um, so yeah, they take that into post-production and they have, you know, we give them something good, what they want for their project. So that's kind of the whole process from virtual production, how it kind of works from being then. But, uh, but yeah, I know I talked a lot about the 2D asset, like a video image play, but in camera view effects can kind of parallel with virtual production. So I can go into that as well, but we do both. And can someone use their own DSLR camera? <sighs> um, yes and no. So I tell people, um, I have a guide I give out to people um, for cinematographers who come in. Um, I recommend strongly a cinema camera, a film camera, when you come into a virtual studio um, where it has shutter angle and different things on it for settings. Um, DSLRs, I don't recommend for various reasons. There's very few settings we'll work on a DSLR. Um, not many, if at all, it depends on the camera on the DSLR, but there's very few settings we'll work on a DSLR camera. So myself, my team, we don't recommend those. Uh, bring a cinema camera into our studio, or I'd recommend that to any virtual studio. So yeah. And, and I'm assuming no, no iPhones? Yeah, so it also, so no, good question. Uh, phones also, like phone cameras, you're gonna have a lot of issues with as well. Um, and these issues I'm talking about, you'll see, uh, we call it banding, uh, horizontal banding and flickering. Um, 
and there's different terms in the in retro production, the VFX community for this. Some people call it like line tearing um, and flickering, horizontal banding, but you're gonna see different elements. Uh, and you're gonna see a lot of that with a phone camera, you can't get around it unless you can adjust some certain settings, um, what need to be done, especially with a cinema camera, what that can offer. So what phones don't offer. So yeah, you're gonna see issues with the phone camera. Can you explain what is parallax? Sure. So parallax, so basically, okay, so in virtual production, we have our 3D asset, which is Unreal Engine, right? Um, so you have Unreal Engine, and you're going to have a, um, a camera tracker, what gets mounted on the top of the camera. And depending on the type of um, camera tracking solution you're using, you're going to have, it depends. You're, like if you're using Moses, you're going to have these little star, these little reflectors on the ceiling. There's different, there's different companies would offer different things, or they might have like a base station, these, uh, there's another camera tracking solution that has what they call them base stations and it receives a signal. They all operate this similar. They receive a signal to the camera tracker and that camera tracker gets tied in unison with a end game camera. So there's an actual camera inside Unreal Engine we call a Cine Camera Actor and that through a, um, a plug-in in Unreal Engine ties both of those in unison. So the camera tracker and the end game camera. So when it's tied together basically when you move your camera tracker on top of the camera, it's the screens we, we call it parallaxing. It's um it's shifting. It's it's moving. It's it's changing perspective. So if you're panning left or right, it's the environment's going to pan left or right. So if your actor or your subject in front is moving left or right, when the camera tracker and the camera is moving left or right, it's going to move with it. So it creates that real 3D effect that you're actually there um, versus a static image. So that is the definition of parallax and kind of how it works, what it is, and uh, what's involved. What is real-time rendering? Sure. Uh, real-time rendering is basically creating assets on the fly. So like if you're going to create a 3D asset in Unreal Engine, what we call it, um, uh, you're creating it on the spot. So you are either creating that environment on the spot or you're moving objects uh, in the background in Unreal Engine on the spot. So Everything's done, we call it in real time, which means immediately. So if you want to change like mountain ridges, if you want to change waterfalls in this background or um, like buildings, anything, you can move them around, you can delete them, you can change the sunlight direction and keep it in the sunlight in a certain area at all times. Um, but it can be changed in, like I said, what we call real time immediately. So you can change things in real time and you can, um, you can create the environment on the spot if you want. I mean, take some time, like if you're, usually an asset, like a three asset on our engine, it's gonna be created way in advance. Um, but you can move things out, in and out, in the game program immediately, so in real time. Um, so that's one of the big benefits, but that's generally what it is. So you have that, that computer gaming software system, what's, you're changing things, you're creating things on the spot, so that's why it's so beneficial, real time rendering. Um, you're creating things on the fly for what you want for the production. They're like, hey, I don't want that mountain ridge, there, I want to have this there. I want that building moved over here. You just change it right there in a split second. That's it. What about in post-production? Mm -hmm. Can you do the same or no? Once you've shot the image, it's there to stay? Well, there's a lot of things you can do in post-production now. So, I mean, I would say yes. It depends on who, who your VFX guy is in post-production. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. But, um, I mean, the whole purpose of virtual production and, and rear projection with LE walls is it's all shot in the can, it's all shot in picture. So you don't have to do that. You don't have to do a lot of work in post-production. But I mean, if you hire the right person and you're like, hey, I, don't, I changed my mind, I don't like that mountain ridge in the background. I mean, I'm sure they can work some magic to get it out. I've never done that. I, I mean, I don't, we, don't, we don't really do that for the post-production work. We just deal with the virtual production aspect. Um, but, uh, but yeah. How do you match the lighting, especially with people in front of the screen and then what's on the screen? Sure. Yeah, so the lighting, that's one of the biggest elements that will help sell virtual production. And you have to be very careful on how you light. Um, most cinematographers, you know, we guide them when they come here and they'll figure it out, but we, we tech advise and all that. So you're going to match your lighting sources. So if you have like, say you're like in an alleyway or something in a 3D environment or Unreal Engine or wherever, even the video or image plates, um, you're going to match your lighting source. If you have like a street light coming from like over here, you're going to match that. Say it's like a neon light. Well, you're going to put a neon light over here and try to match as best as possible. So you really just try to, it's not too technical. I mean, it, it seems it, but you just match what's on the LED wall 
wherever your lighting is coming from, sunlight, or wherever you put that sun, that, that lighting in the same area to come down on your subject. Um, so that's how you kind of light it. So there's different elements and wherever else is needed to sell, you know, that you're in that environment. Can you tell us about using virtual production to take advantage of golden hour? Well, I can remember as myself going on locations uh, and filming and having to worry about rushing to get that shot off because of, you know, the sun's running out, you're running out of time. You want that specific look with the sun in a certain direction, you know, for your environment. Um, but with this in virtual production is you don't have to worry about that at all because the sun can now be manipulated to stay in the same exact direction for the whole time you're there, essentially. Or it can be moved, it can be taken out, uh, you can make it nighttime, um, but you can make it that golden hour the whole time, the whole 12 hour day if you want for how many scenes you want. So that's one of the big benefits of having it versus like, hey, I only have 30 minutes to get the shot. Now you have the 12 hours or however long you're in the studio. How does virtual production impact travel costs? Yeah, that's, um, well, huge. Because now with the virtual studio, everything's shot in the studio. You don't have to travel anywhere. You just go to the studio and the cast and crew doesn't have to travel two hours to get to the mountains or deserts or wherever the location is. If you want to shoot an indoor location, a mountain ridge location, like a desert location in one day, you can do that. So you just go to the virtual studio and everything can literally be changed on that LED wall in a matter of seconds. If you're using Unreal Engine or even a video image plate, it can be changed in a second. So, so yeah, you don't have to travel two hours to get to these locations. You can do everything right there and that's where it cuts down on your production time literally in half. So instead of a 12 day shoot, you're doing a six day shoot because now you just did a, a shot on the skyscraper of New York. Your next scene is um, indoors somewhere and then now you're out in, in the mountains, the snowy mountains doing some snow scene. It's all shot right there, wherever the studio is at. And what about the fact that as filmmakers start using this technology that maybe a lot of films will have the same uh, backgrounds? Well, you know, hmm. Well, yes and no. I mean, I mean, they can. I mean, so under Engine, you can make you can make these backgrounds. Um, so whoever, either yourself or whoever your team is, either your team makes it, or you can source through another contractor who makes under Engine backgrounds. Um, so yeah, either you make it yourself or another contractor, or however. There's different ways. There's a marketplace you can get them as well. So um, royalty free, commercial free. So. Yeah, so there's constantly new, new environments being made. Or like I said, you make yourself. And if you're using a 2D asset, such as a video image plates, you can go film those yourself, shoot them yourself, or you can go online too and get royalty-free, stock-free um, images or video files to, to use. So there's, there's tons of ways to keep getting the files and making them, so, yeah. So the possibilities are endless that you're not gonna be sort of like, there's not gonna be 100 templates right. and everyone's gonna have the same thing. Right, because especially with Unreal Engine, I mean, they're always making, there's so many different assets and things where are constantly being made that you can get for yourself or make it yourself. Um, you can constantly, it's endless possibilities. And same with video image plates. You can go and shoot those yourself or get it from somebody else. So yeah, there's no, like I'm, I'm not worried about it. I know a lot of other filmmakers, they shouldn't be worried about like seeing the same backdrop for like different movies and stuff. Because anything can be made, it doesn't matter what it is, you just design it from scratch.